Scott and Irwin were located on an undulating plain situated between the Apennines and Hadley Rill, an area selected by the scientists as being one of the most geologically significant sites on the moon. Okay, overhead hatch is open and latch. Two hours after touchdown, Dave Scott stood up in Falcon's upper hatch to survey their landing area. Oh boy, what a view. Uh, I can see uh, Bhutan and Icarus. As Scott stood describing the craters and mountains, we on Earth perhaps did not yet realize the scope and extent of the coming mission. Aboard the lunar module was a small dune buggy-like car called the Lunar Roving Vehicle, or just plain Rover. The astronauts would travel miles in collecting samples and placing and conducting experiments. Uh, there are no sharp jagged peaks, there are no large boulders apparent anywhere. They would observe the layering of the lunar terrain most clearly seen in the formation 14 miles to the south, called Silver Spur. This layering, later to be observed in the mountains and the rill, gives scientists a direct look at the structure of the moon and a deeper insight as to the significance of the collected samples. The journey of Apollo 15 had begun four days earlier. July 26, 1971. The crew, Dave Scott, spacecraft commander and veteran of Gemini 8 and Apollo 9. Jim Irwin, lunar module pilot, who would explore Hadley Rill and the Apennine Front with Scott. Al Warden, command module pilot, who would remain in lunar orbit operating an extensive array of cameras and experiments and making observations which, when coupled with the surface work of Scott and Irwin, would give the most comprehensive picture of the moon's structure and history ever achieved. We have complete clearance to launch. We are go. 15 minutes. 